Welcome, Gun Runner. Hello everybody, Kieran AK The Laird here and I have another new magazine review for you. And this is something that's probably quite unexpected. I don't think a lot of people would have been uh, thinking that I would look at this magazine. And um, I certainly never thought that it would be something that I would come across. Um, and I'll go into that uh, in a moment actually. But as you can see, it is the CDI magazine. Um, which is the official magazine to support the Philips CDI, of course. Um, pretty much gives it away, really, doesn't it? Um, and those of you who watch my show regularly will know I spoke about many times about a huge, huge bundle of magazines that I um, picked up of someone on Facebook. And um, I've been working through those. And in amongst that big bundle was actually this this one magazine here this first one you can see issue two of the magazine um and i, ha I had a look around several times to see if i could find some more issues because i thought well uh, a, a, a video about one issue of the magazine is a bit rubbish because usually i do it as a series or at least have a few issues to look at um and nothing nothing ever came seemed to come up so i certain it for ages and then one day i happened to be looking at eBay um, for something else, and it suggested a listing to me that contained all the ones on the back, which is five copies. Um, I can't remember how much they were, but they were a very reasonable price. Um, I think they were buy it now as well, so I snapped them up. So it gave me six issues to look at. So I've got one, three, four, and then I've got some later issues, um, 11, 12, and 14, which are all quite late issues, actually, as far as the CDI's life goes. Very interesting because I'm actually a bit of a fan of the CDI. Um, as some may know, I think it's a, a a bit of a misunderstood console. I think it's a bit of an underrated console, and I think it gets um, a lot of unwanted hate. I mean, to be fair, it's not even really a console, is it? It was designed as a multimedia player. So obviously, this ma these magazines aren't solely focused on games; they're focused on the whole world of uh, multimedia in general. Um, it was only the later 450 CDI that was uh, repositioned as a console. So we start off with this one, issue two. I don't have issue one annoyingly. I did try to look for issue one, but I only could only find one, and it was extortionately expensive, so I didn't bother. Um, but you can see already on the cover, this is talking about Seventh Guest, and it's even got a world-exclusive interview with Dominic Diamond here of Games Master fame, so that's pretty cool to see. So let's have a look what else uh, the magazine has to offer. It says, um, if there's no disc, see your... Agents, there's obviously a free um, disc on the front of that as well. Um, I'm not sure what that was though, because it doesn't actually say. Uh, it starts off with an advert there for Ultimate Noah's Ark. Um, and then we've got our contents. So, um, all sorts of stuff there. Um, so, a mix, looking at movies, games, tech, karaoke, kids' stuff, adult. So, covering all different categories of multimedia. So, the new CDI 210. Uh, is launched at £399. I'm not sure what that um, is in today's money, but I'd be willing to bet it's well over a 1000 um, without uh, calculating it right here. It um, came with a Gravis pad with the little stick in it. I've got that's what I've got one of those pads. Uh, CGI pads are like um, hen's teeth. They're, they're so hard to find, but thankfully I've got one with mine. I've got a 220, which I've looked at on the channel before. So Paramount signs a movie deal with um, Philip signs a movie deal with Paramount. Even so, it's saying about bringing Top Gun, Phil Collins. There, some stuff. Uh, to make tennis, Jurassic Park. Uh, that never came out, but yes, there were, I know there was supposed to be a, a Jurassic Park game on CDI, but it never arrived. So Sony enters the CDI world. That's the first portable CDI player with a built-in screen. Uh, very cool indeed. The Discman. Sorry, the intelligent discman they called it because of it being the multimedia version because obviously there was normal discman which just played CDs. Uh, release line up there, some stuff that's coming out seems to mostly be film stuff. There's Caesar's World of Boxings on there which is very good. Very good game. The Diamond Reports that's going into um, Seventh Guest and talking with Dominic Diamond about it which is pretty cool to see. Um, their verdict, they gave it 94%, so very high rating. I mean, 
be fair, Seventh Guest is a very highly regarded game. It's not really for me, but um, uh, it's very impressive on CDI as well to use the digital video. What about Seventh Guest there? An interview with Virgin who supported the CDI with quite a few different games. Uh, some more stuff about movies. So the Top Gun again, Hunt for Red October, Naked Gun. Um, I've actually got all of those actually in my CDI collection, thinking about it. All of those four there. Uh, Alfred, Alfred Dixon's was the first place I ever saw the CDI. I remember it being demoed with um, Palm Springs Golf and being absolutely blown away by it. It's my earliest memory of the CDI. But the really snobby guy who was demoing it to obviously rich people um, refused to let me play it because I was just a kid and it wasn't a kid's machine apparently. Um, and we were very disappointed. We just had to sit and watch. But oh well. Uh, Microcosm um, preview. Which I, did that come out the CDI edition of Microcosm? I can't remember if it's Microcosm or Mega Race, but one of the two never came out because the, the, there wasn't enough RAM. I've got to, in the CDI. I've got a feeling it was Microcosm, but uh, could be wrong. Caesar's World of Boxing, which is very good. Um, it's a lot like Evander Holyfield on the Mega Drive, but with extra bits and the video and stuff. It's very good. It's probably one of my favourite CDI games. Uh, Keva, another high rating, 95. Keva's good, actually. It's probably one of the best CDI games. And it's a CDI exclusive as well, but that's perhaps a bit over the top. Uh, a Comet advert for the CDI. Link Faces of Evil. Uh, so admitted that it wasn't the greatest. 65 or so, that's about fair. I don't think the Zelda games on the CDI are terrible. Um, I think they're reasonably playable. One of Gamble on the game 75. That's definitely the better of the two. Um, I pretty much think they're spot on, those ratings, actually. I don't think they're um, as bad as a lot of people may count. In I'm not really a fan of Zelda RPGs. So with these being... I don't like RPGs in general, really. So with these being arcade adventures, they were a bit more interesting to me, to be honest. Uh, Inca, which they gave 85. Strange to see them give that a small review because it was quite a big uh, deal on CDI Inca. It was a, it's a good game as well, a very good game. So it's strange that they've given it such a small space. Um, what's that at the top? Mind Quest. I don't have that game. It looks like it's a sliding puzzle kind of thing. 70. Noah's Ark. I don't have that. They gave that 95. Blimey, they like handing out big ratings don't they a great day at the races they gave 80 it's not worth 80 it's all right it has it was it mickey rooney it has doing the voiceover for it i believe um which is quite entertaining yeah mickey rooney i thought so yeah it's quite entertaining but it's not the greatest uh notice lots of phillips adverts in this uh exploiting their own space so looking at the uh, cdi 210 chicago chicago says so the cd is that the cumul electronic show is going to say yes uh, city there's some Star Trek, that's the NFL um, pack. I've got that one. I've got Sir City. Sir City's bloody right all load of rubbish it is. The making of Voyeur, which is very cool to see there. Uh, they gave that 95, so another really generous rating. We think that Phillips might have um, had a bit of a say in the ratings of some of these games. Uh, amazing facts about the CDI. The Joy of Sex, um, which shocks a lot of people when they release that on CDI at the time, actually. There was quite a bit of controversy about it. Well, CDI, The Fun Factory, um, Hanna Barbera's Cartoon Carnival, I've got that, and Wacky World of Miniature Golf, I've got that. With, uh, of course, uh, Eugene Levy, the amazing uh, he of American Pie fame, um, does the, the voiceover for, um, for Wacky World of Miniature Golf. Very entertaining. The game isn't the greatest because it's not really precise enough in terms of aiming your shots and stuff but it's still still cool having him on it uh that that's reasonably fun that Hanna-Barbera things that skins as a kid's game Berenstain Bears on their own uh, I've got that somewhere as well actually 80 kids game obviously Little Monster at School don't have that never seen it never played it actually A Child is Born Sarah Brewer Resident Doctor Daily Motor is interested to tour of childbirth on the CDI. <laughs> Great. 95, another incredibly stupidly generous rating there. Dorit Smith's big Dorit Smith's going to stop CDI, so it's got a list of the ones that do there, not that many. And Epic Tales, Epic Interactive Media, talking about what they do in the CDI. Uh, Shipwreck, I'm not familiar with that, I have to say. 75, they gave that. Soundtrap, another one I don't know at all. Um, 75. Portable CDI player. See, this is one of the ones where it's a portable CDI player, but if you want to, um, well, that's a that's just a disc one. I was going to say because there is CDIs that are like look like they're a discman um, because they don't have a screen, but 
their portable CDI, but without a screen. So you're supposed to take them places and then plug them into a TV. Um, I suppose it's all right if you go on a holiday or if you go to demo somewhere or something. But yeah, a bit strange even still. Uh, karaoke classics. I've got a couple of the karaoke discs. Can't remember which ones because they're all themed uh, letters. So as you can see, people did actually write into them. Lemmings there. Talk about that. Uh, discs you can order, 6% off if you purchase with a CDI player. That's a pretty good deal, isn't it? And a CDI catalogue there at the back of the magazines. That's pretty cool to see. So you can um, see what's out, how much it costs, etc, etc. More CDI adverts. Uh, dealer directory. Uh, how is this? Is it done by uh, area? Is it done by? Well, yeah, it's done by um, alphabetical order. So Luton there it says B and B Hi Fi and Comet. So Dixon's isn't on there. It's actually Dixon's was the say it was the first place I saw Dixon's in Luton. Um, it's St Albans on there. I spent more time in St Albans than I did in Luton. Uh, no, there's no St Albans on there. Uh, it looks like one of my cats is going to come in. Who's he? And then a nice advert for um, the Zelda games on the back of the magazine. So we'll switch now. I'm going to have a look at issue three. So now we've got a pretty cool Star Trek cover. Uh, first preview, Kirk and Bones hit your CDI. Um, I think I've got two of the Star Trek movies on CDI disc. I think I've got... Um, Wrath of Khan and I think I've got The Voyage Home I think they're the two that I've got I'd have to check I've actually got a lot of video CDs in my collection because my, my CDI came with tons of them it came with far more video CDs than it did games in fact so whoever owned my CDI originally um, that's obviously what they used it for mostly was playing video CDs because it's, oh, loads of music ones as well not just the video not just the films but also the, the music ones Tons of music ones, which I've never even touched because they're bands that I'm not interested in. Uh, so there we go. Let's have a look at so this one then. It's talking about Super Mario prepares for its CDI debut. Uh, Super Mario's Wacky Worlds, it's called, never came out, unfortunately. It's a shame because the prototype of it looks pretty um, impressive, actually. And it's talking about Zelda's Adventure. It's the third Zelda game for the um, CDI and the worst one of the lot. I have all of them. I do have um, Hotel Mario, of course, which is on... Uh, CDI, which is very, very good, but not. Uh, I, I haven't actually got the Ma Mario's Wacky Worlds prototype, but that's pretty easy to get hold of. You can see, download it if you want to. Korean CDI players, uh, digital video cartridges, sell out, uh, more films coming. Uh, Star Trek Under Cover Country, it might be that one I have, maybe. I don't know, I've got a feeling it's a voyage only. Uh, Untouchables, Ghost, Fatal Attraction. I've got Untouchables, I've got Ghost, I've got Fatal Attraction, I've got Black Rain. I haven't got Raiders of the Lost Ark. I've got Patriot Games, I've got Top Guns, I've got most of those actually, blind me. Boxing Clever. So Barry McGuigan uh, takes a look at uh, Caesar's World of Boxing, which is obviously previewed briefly in the, the previous um, issue. So that's quite cool. And uh, it's a very good game actually. They gave it 89. Um, I'll probably go a little bit harder than that. I think it's one of the best games on the CDI. Uh, Cartoon Carnival. It was in the previous issue, I swear, unless it's a different version of the, the game. Maybe it's a version that uses the digital video cartridge or something. I don't know where there was more than one version, though. I oh, know, because Kenner, that was in the last issue as well. So, oh, I think maybe the ones that get big, big reviews in the last issue, they also give a small review in this issue. Um, yeah, because Voyeur's there as well. And the Joy of Sex, that's what they do. <laughs> Put them in more than one magazine. Make sure people see them, I guess. Campbell vs. Diamond, so Dominic Diamond again, obviously he had a key part in this magazine then. Um, we've got Nicky Campbell playing Dominic Diamond at uh, tennis in CBI, which is pretty good in international tennis. Uh, Mad Dog McCree in Space Ace. Mad Dog McCree's great with the gun actually. Phantom Express, uh, not so great, they gave it 70, I think it's a pretty poor game. Steel Machine and Little Devil. Little Devil's uh, pretty damn good actually, um, but Steel Machine's even better. Steel Machine is my favourite CDI game probably. They only gave it 75, which I think is harsh. Sound 90, it's got such amazing soundtrack and um, speech as well. Uh, yeah, I, I don't agree with that one at all. I think um, they're well underrated. Steel Machine there, playing Guy to Inca. 
and the player cards Kevin. That's cool to see actually. Darren Hedges, man behind um, Philip's new gaming hotline. He seems familiar, but I'm not sure why. Astrology Solar System. I've got Solar System. I haven't got Astrology. I've definitely got Solar System though. I remember thinking that was pretty cool actually. I fiddled with it for ages. So that's the head of um, the newly formed uh, games publishing division of Philips. There, interview with him. Uh, looks like we've got some more movies and music. Music this time, sorry, yeah. And here's Todd. So, uh, Todd Rungren, never heard of him. Chill Out and Pulse. So, yeah, these Hex. Hex are quite famous in the gaming scene, actually, because... Um, Anyone who had a Spectrum will remember games by a company called The Powerhouse, a budget publisher who used to put songs from the Hex record label on the B side of the tapes because they were owned by the same um, company. Um, and I also remember thinking that they were really weird and really rubbish. Um, but they did a few discs for the CDI. There's Bon Jovi. Uh, let's set a Technicolor Dreamcoat there as well. Surf City 90. God. No way. It's just so pointless. It's just so, so pointless. It really is. Demo's Quest, they gave 80, which I think perhaps is a bit low. Because, again, I think Demo's Quest is one of the best games in the CDI. Uh, they're making a joy of sex. That gets in here again. That was in the last issue. Uh, another effort for Zelda. Uh, beat em up. Mortal Kombat isn't a beat em up. It's a fighting game. So that's someone saying they hope Mortal Kombat comes to um, CDI. Um, it didn't. Um, but they seem to be hinting that it was going to. That's interesting. Um, might be worth investigating more to find out whether that was ever ever planned. Given my massive interest in unreleased games. And then the catalogue at the back. Uh, CDI Top 20. There, so that's the chart. Okay. And an advert for Voya on the back. So what issue we've got next? Number four. There we go. What we've got on the cover there, movie news. Um, Clint Eastwood, so he's obviously got a film on CDI. Uh, Mad Dog McCree, um, again, Little Devil, again. So they do repeat a lot of their content across these magazines, don't they? Because we've had a lot of those in the last ones. So more news. Um, Hulk Hogan's that would be Thunder in Paradise, which I thought was terrible. Um, seems to have its fans though, a lot of people seem to love Thunder in Paradise on the uh, CDI. I'm straight to launch CDI player. Well, that never happened. But that's actually quite interesting to see um, in there. Very interesting indeed, actually. Maybe they were planning planning that. Uh, to have got involved in that. And there is uh, Dexter Fletcher, who obviously replaced Dominic Diamond. So obviously when Dominic Diamond went, they obviously decided to get uh, Dexter Fletcher in to do articles in here as well. Since they had some kind of relationship with Games Master. And now they've got um, Mad Dog, him playing Mad Dog McCree there, which they're giving 95, which is um, stupidly generous for what is uh, an entertaining but uh, ultimately quite generic game. But then they have got Dominic Diamond as well, so they've got kind of both of them in the same issue, which is interesting. Uh, Little Divil, 80. Uh, it says that only game will work in progress version. Oh, okay, interesting. Hotel Mario, uh, oh, pages got folded, that's annoying. So they gave 75, which I think is well too low. Um, I don't know if they had maybe had a bit of beef with Nintendo at this point. Um, probably, which is why they didn't want to give their games high ratings. I don't know, because Hotel Mario is easily one of the best CDI games. It's very good indeed. Chaos Control, um, preview, one of my favourite CDI games, actually. really like Chaos Control. Striker. Um, decent striker, but not as good as the like uh, Amiga ST versions at all. It's a slightly different um, game, slightly has a slightly different viewpoint and stuff. It's still good, but it's just not as good as it could have been, I think. Um, Lemmings, which is excellent, of course, in CDI, it's excellent at everything. Uh, Burn Cycle, the best, well, most well known sort of CDI game, probably. Uh, Earth Command, which I have, it's quite good actually. Uh, 90, I'm not sure I'll go that high, but it is quite entertaining. Uh, Brian Adams. Bob Marley, 90. God, not a fan of Bob Marley at all. The Music Machine. 
So uh, people talking to people about making music on the CDR, so lots of interviews with different people there. More Philips adverts, a guide to Voyeur. A guide to Link. Buy to Alice in Wonderland. And uh, another advert for the Zelda games in CDI. There's some adverts at the back of this one. Uh, here's our letters. We'll go through them. And the usual catalogue at the back. Uh, films, games, and then stockists, etc. Like the other ones. Uh, and then a Philips advert on the back as well. Lots of Philips advertising. And that's it. That's those first um, three issues that I've got. Um, so obviously I will be following this up um, in the near future with a look at the the next lot of issues, um, which will probably start with that one, which is that's issue 11. That's the next one in turn that I've got here. Um, but I've been the lad. Um, I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my look at CDI magazine and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye.